You're listening to a message presented at Newmarket Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in Newmarket, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at Newmarket Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. I decided to title this morning's message, The Right Foundations. You'll see where we're going in a minute, but before we go there, let's pray together. To God, I am looking so forward to sharing this message. I know that your foundation is a firm one. It's a reliable one. And if we build on it, all that we build will stand firm. Thanks for that foundation, dear Lord. Help us never forget those things that you've taught us. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. The right foundation. You know, by now I'm guessing we probably put our Christmas trees up. Right? I- I'm guessing if you haven't, you're running way behind time. We have probably put our Christmas trees up. We've dug out the ornaments and we've decorated those puppies to the hill. I mean, they are glowing. I'm guessing some of our trees are topped with stars. I think ours has a snowflake. So what it was? A snowflake up there? Uh, we have a flaky tree. <laughs> um, we, snowflake. Some of them are topped with stars. Some of them are topped with angels, like this one. All kinds of things on the trees. Some of the trees are covered with colored lights, and some of the trees are covered with white lights. That's our tree. That's our grandkids help us put, them, put those things on there. And there's some trees that are covered with blinking lights and some have homemade decorations. And, uh, I tell you what, I've even seen some trees where the owners have got stamina out of this world. Because underneath the tree, they put a train track with a train going around. They've got a lot more stamina and energy than I do. I'm thinking, I don't want to be crawling around underneath a tree putting in a train track. But, but I've seen them. Anybody else seen train tracks under trees? Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? I've also seen that nearby many of the Christmas trees, there's a nativity scene setting to remind us the reason for the season. All of these trees that we have prettied up for this season are setting in prominent places. Well, we don't decorate them all up and put them in a closet and expect them just to set in there. We, we get them out. We let them shine nice and bright. By now I'm guessing that underneath a lot of those trees there's presents and presents and more presents. Presents every place. Anybody have presents under the tree at their house? I, I'm guessing we probably do have some presents that are underneath the tree. We're all looking forward to visitors coming from near and far as we celebrate Jesus' birth by the giving and receiving of gifts. By now, I am guessing that the planning of meals is probably begun, and and you might even be further along than that. I'm guessing you probably already handed out the cooking assignments. I don't know how you do that if you're family. That's what we do. Okay, you bring the beans, make sure you've got some of them onions on top, and you bring the, the slaw, not that sour stuff, we want the sweet stuff. You bring the rolls, get some good fluffy ones. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know who cooks what really well, and you begin to, to, to just divide up the meal in order that everything comes out in a wonderful way. And I think we're all, I mean, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. We're all getting anxious to celebrate this joyous event with family and friends. I'm thinking that's probably where we are right about now. The kids are probably fit to be tied, wanting to tear into those presents. I'm guessing not a single one of us has been spending our time calling in folks to look under our Christmas tree at the Christmas tree stand. I just don't think we do that. We don't, come, we don't come over to look at the Christmas tree stand. In fact, we cover that puppy up. We, my wife was going through the store this last week and she said, you see that basket around that tree? I want one like that, but that's really expensive. wonder what we can do in this place. She said, how about cutting off the bottom of a wash tub and put it down? 
Everybody wants to cover up the tree stand. If you want to cover it up with the wash tub, you might be a hillbilly by nature. I'm not sure. <laughs> you married one, is that what you said? But, but we cover that thing up, don't we? We usually cover it up with a pretty cloth or a basket or a wash tub because we don't want it to be seen. We're afraid that it will detract from the bling of the Christmas tree. That's a funny word that they're using nowadays. I thought I'd give it a try. The bling of the Christmas tree. We want folks to see the glitter and the sparkle and the flickering lights, if they're flickering, or the steady lights if they're not. All the beautiful colors or the not so colorful. I, you know, whatever it is, we want people to see it because we spent time putting that stuff on there, right? And no one's going to be impressed by the Christmas tree stand, so we just cover it up. But my question is, where would all of these beautiful trees be were it not for the Christmas tree stand? I'm guessing that that's probably pretty much the case. Here's a picture I think maybe sums it up. It may have had a little help according to the picture, but I think it pretty much sums it up. <laughs> this is where they'd be <laughs> without the Christmas tree stand, right? And that's where they would be. This being true, you have to wonder, why in the world do we cover up the Christmas tree stands? If they're that important, why don't we hide them so well? Why don't we want anybody to see them? I think the bottom line is, the stand just isn't as pretty as the tree in the trimmings. And therefore, out of sight, out of mind. Let it do its job, but let's not flaunt it. Let it do its job, but let's not point it out. Let's just cover it up with a wash tub. <laughs> Still on here. We want people to see the bling, right? We want to see the sparkle. The Christmas tree stand just doesn't cut it. It's not fancy enough. And I am afraid the same thing is happening in many churches around the world today. Let me explain what I mean. We want folks to see the praise bands. We want them to see the Christian concerts and the fancy coffee bars. I mean, we make that coffee that bones up. You know, it's like... We've got all kinds of stuff. And the, the amazing lighting. I mean, the videos. And the stage props. We want to make sure they see all of that. Because all of these things cry, look at us. We are a beautiful bunch. Don't you want to come join us? Don't you want to come and be a part of all of this? Somewhere along the way, we seem to have become content hiding the foundation that the church is built upon. And I'd like for us to take a few moments this morning to let that foundation shine. Let me be clear. The foundation of Christ's church may not be glitzy. It may not have a lot of bling. But I promise you, it is solid. The solid foundation that supports the body of Christ, according to Scripture itself, this foundation that opened the doors of Christ's church to Jews and Gentiles alike, this foundation upon which the church of Jesus Christ is built is completely reliable. You can't tear it down easily. But if you don't build on it, there's a little song that explains what's going to happen. The wise man built his house upon the rock the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. You got it. You, got it. you know that song, don't you? The house that's built upon the rock stands firm, right? What happens to the house that was built on the sand? Just like that Christmas tree with the dog in the front of it, it falls flat. The foundation is very, very important. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22, we read these words. Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, 
and foreigners to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. And through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises up to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Wow. You talk about a foundation upon which you can build. The foundation of the prophets, the foundation of the apostles, the foundation of the words and works of Jesus himself. Christ came from heaven to earth to reveal a clear path to our eternal home. He opened this path to Jew and Gentile alike. The hostility that once divided us, he set it aside. We've been declared brothers and sisters in Christ by the blood of Jesus. His broken body, his shed blood, provided for us the one sacrifice which is sufficient for all time and all men and all women to come be with him forever if they are willing to accept this wonderful gift of love. That's how much God loves us this Christmas season. He provided citizenship to all who desire it. We are being built into his church as living stones. This structure stands because of the teachings of the apostles and prophets and the words of Jesus. It's not enough to tell fancy stories. We need to be sharing the truths of Almighty God found in his word, his, in, his, in the Bible, his holy word. Jesus laid down his life to become the chief cornerstone. Now we don't know much about that sometimes today, but man, when they used to build those structures, they would lay that cornerstone down, they would get it level, they would set it in just the right angle, and then everything else would be built off of that cornerstone in order, in order to make the building come together just right. That's Jesus, putting everything together so that it would be made just right. Together, you and I, as living stones are being built into an eternal kingdom, Christ Church, all of this has been made possible through the actions of the one who came as the little baby who made his way to the cross of Calvary. Jesus did that for me. Jesus did that for you. This Christmas season, I want us to remember this wonderful reality. Our salvation comes from God through his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus' selfless act of love for all mankind is revealed in an overwhelming way in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. He didn't have to come. He chose to let go of heaven in order that he could grab a hold of you and me Look what it says there in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Some trans translations will see grasped or held on to. Rather, he made himself nothing to take the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Jesus let go of heaven so he could embrace you and me. So that he could take us home to be with him forever. That's the foundational message of Christmas. Jesus did that for you and me. It may not be glitzy, but I promise you, when we build on this foundation, our work will stand. It doesn't matter how hard the storms roar, our work will stand. The words and work of Jesus... <laughs> They are unparalleled. God truly deserves our worship. God truly deserves our adoration. This Christmas season, as you're opening the presents and enjoying the glitz of the tree, remember the stand. Remember the foundation. As we gather to worship God in this place, it's a beautiful place to be, but let's remember the foundation of the apostles, of the prophets, and the words of Jesus. Let's build on them because building on anything else will not stand. Let's worship him together this morning as we stand, as we sing our hymn of invitation. Let's worship and adore him. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors.